Welcome, everybody. Um, welcome, everyone, to the uh, book binding workshop presented by Nate and Jessica Bickford. I'm Dorgan Keeney, the assistant librarian here at Johnson Public Library, and wanted to let you know this presentation is being recorded and will be archived at Green Mountain Public Access Television. Um, and in a week or so, we'll send you out the link to the presentation in case you want to see it again or share it with your friends, of course. Um, also want to let you know that Green Mountain Public Access Television archives the presentations on YouTube after several years. Please write your questions in the chat room or raise your hand using the Zoom mechanism. Otherwise, uh, if you could keep your computers muted, that would be helpful. Um, I'm presently at the library. If you're having difficulty, you can call at 635-7141 if you're having trouble accessing the meeting. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Nate and Jessica Bickford. Hello, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, book binding is something that Nate has had an interest in. Uh, Nate's a ninth grader and uh, we've, he's kind of grown up here in this library and this just seemed like a great way to kind of share a skill and invite others into the community of book binding. So um, I think you each got a kit. Um, I'm Jessica, I also live in Johnson, I'm Nate's mom. Um, you each got a kit. Um, in the kit um, are the table of contents. And so if you wanna open that up, um, we're gonna do a style where we're all kind of working together. Um, I'm gonna do an intro and then, then Nate's gonna lead us through the steps and uh, We'll just kind of go back and forth. Um, the first thing is a template. Um, on the template, it's just a folded piece of paper. It has some holes already punched in it. And there, you'll see some numbers. And um, if you flip it over both on the front and back, and that's the order that we're gonna bind it. So, um, so that'll be important in a, in a couple of moments. Also, you have a green piece of wool. Uh, wrapped around that is your binding thread. Um, a, a needle and a T-pin. Uh, the T-pin is gonna be important for putting the holes in, in your paper. Uh, you have your paper um, and you have some cover stock. Um, additionally, um, it, it's helpful to have, not necessary, is either a bone folder or a teaspoon. Um, you can you just use your finger or a ruler or some sort of something sort of hard to kind of give yourself a good crease. Um, also helpful is to have an old book. Uh, this is where free book piles come in handy. Um, and so we're using an old encyclopedia. Um, and uh, yeah. So Nate, do you want to start talking about what the first step is? Yeah, so the first step is to take the packet of paper that you have in your kit and to fold them all in half. There's another camera here that goes a closer look at what I'm doing. Um, you fold it in half the long one, I think, so that you end up with a booklet of about this size, a small one. And then So go ahead and do that now, and we'll wait for everybody to get each of your pages folded. And Nate, are they gonna stack those together? Um, kind of, stacking together is pretty true. Um, you're going to put one booklet inside of another booklet. So that looks like this. And you're just going to keep doing that with each of your pieces of paper. So you have them all. And the book binding first became important in our house, I think. Nate was probably five or six um, when he started having a real interest in making books. And then I think when he was seven or eight, he got a long arm stapler for his birthday um, and was making books that way. And then we started this process a, a few years ago when we were homeschooling 
um, just to kind of, it was, a, we were going to do another project, but the weather wasn't cooperating and uh, we had a friend over. And uh, so we looked up book binding and, and it set us on the course. Um, this is the, the style that we started with. Um, Nate's going to show some other samples at the end. He's actually gotten a little bit more advanced over time. Give us a nod when all of your, your sheets are folded. So. Okay, a couple of you, and we're still, still finishing up here. So then as Nate said, we're gonna stack them inside each other. So I'm gonna do his, well, he finishes up. So if you don't have a old book, um, a cutting board or a cutting mat uh, is helpful, um, just so you don't ruin the surface of um, the table that you're working at. So, there you go. Uh, I pulled this on the other paper. No, that's fine. These ones feel different. So, so. Okay. There we go. So, looks like we're almost there. So, you're going to want to take out your T pin next. That one didn't happen. Um, also, if you have it, you can use an awl. Um, you know, just is really sharp and actually gives you a little bit more, but uh, just budget wise, it was um, less expensive to do T pins. And that's actually what we started using when we first started. So, so Nate's going to get his, his book open here. And also while you're waiting, if you want to thread your needle, um, you can do that. So. And are they doing the cover now too? Are they folding the cover? Yes. Yes, please fold your cover in half as well. So. There you go. So Nate, what do you like to do with your journals or your notebooks that you make? Uh, it kind of varies. Um, I, yeah, it really varies. Um, I either write things just for fun of writing, um, stories, things like that, or I record things for school or for other projects and things I'm involved with. I think, I think everybody's got their, their all their folds done. So, so you're going to take your, what type of thread do we recommend? Um, so yeah, we recommend actually a waxed thread. What you're using today is just like a, a crocheted cotton, um, which is probably what's most available. Um, and if you're using a crochet cotton, um, you can also go to uh, Flipbrook Farm Stand has these little beeswax and you can just kind of rub it and it just strengthens it overall. Um, but for, for these, you know, they're, they're simple little ones, but if you're doing more pages or more folios, then you would definitely want to have a thicker spread. Um, Nate's going to share a little bit about it. He has a bookbinding kit that actually comes with various wax threads. So. Um, but whatever you have handy works. So, okay. You're going to show us how to punch holes? Yeah. So center your booklet onto the cover as best you can. So that's going to leave a little bit of room around the edges, but not too much. And then put your template in the middle of the open section. And then you're going to put it down into an old book or onto a cutting board. An old book is helpful because your T pin will slide into an empty space. So what you're going to do is then you'll see five holes in the template. So you're just going to push the teeth in through each of those five holes all the way through the cover. 
And if this is too thick, you could do it in a couple of different batches, so. And we're now done with the. Okay. And so give us a thumbs up when you are set with your holes. Well, okay. Uh, yep. And your needles threaded. Um, the question is do you double up the thread? Uh, I do not personally, no. So, great question, um, single thread. We may have given you more thread than you need. So if you, um, if you're gonna get to take out the top one. So, so when you start um, threading this, you're gonna take your template with that had the holes and the numbers actually out. Um, so you're not binding that into your book. Um, it was there for reference, so. And I think everybody more or less has their holes punched. So Nate, where do we go down first? So, so if you look at the template with the numbers, um, it shows on the inside, there's a one. So you're going to enter there first. Right in the middle. Right in the middle on the inside. Yeah, you might have to really put a little oomph on it. So now we, we're not tying a knot here, right, Nate? No, you're not tying a knot here. So, so you can just kind of hold it, or if you happen to have tape available, you can just take a tiny piece of tape. Um, if you're using tape, go ahead and like make it a little less sticky with your fingers. So that way it doesn't, it doesn't scar the inside of the page, but. Okay, so. Then, following the template, it shows that you go back onto the inside with the hole above. And if you have questions, feel free to unmute yourself too. That that works. We have our small enough pad, so. Oh, I have a question. Can we see what you're doing there, Nate? Like, can we move the, can you move the camera so we can actually see? Um, the glare might be a little too heavy on this. There's a lot of natural light coming in, but, yeah. and it's also white on white. Um, used to <laughs> but maybe on this camera, if you can see it slightly better. Um, so he started in the middle and then he went around the back and just went up. Back to the inside. Back to the inside. Okay. So now he's on the inside. Your thread's coming up from the middle on the inside. Not from the middle. One up, no, one up from the middle, sorry, <laughs> from the inside. Uh, and then after that, you just go up one more. So you're outside on the top or bottom. It doesn't matter really. Next one. And I'll send off the system. Okay. Yeah, the two. Yeah. That's the one. So I'll bring it over. So now your your spine should look like this, where you have one long line and then it's coming out the, the upper back. Okay. And I'm going to hand it back to me. Okay. Um, we're almost there, I think. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. The next step. 
Okay, so the next step is you enter back into the hole that's labeled number two on and four on your template. So that's outside one up from the center. You go back through that. And you're pulling pretty tight each time, so you're not leaving a lot of slack. You want to go as tight as possible each time. So show it again. So the top of your book now will have two lines, and your thread will be in the middle ish, ish not the middle, middle, the one up from the middle. So on the inside. And we should have used black thread. Note, note for next time uh, when we're teaching this, if we're doing it via Zoom, is to use dark colored thread so you can see it at home. The next step once everyone's there is you don't actually go through the middle hole. You skip the middle hole and go one down. So you're going through one hole below the middle to the outside. So the string will run from one hole above to one hole below on the inside. Okay, so yeah, the inside you'll, you have this really, this kind of long, long thread um, that goes, bypasses that middle hole. And then the outside, you'll have a gap. So you have one, two, a gap, and then the, the thread coming out. Yeah, and these are super handy. We gave, we made a set for my dad for Christmas last year that he uses, um, he has a weather center. And so he tracks the weather and humidity and such. So every day he journals. Um, so you can use them for that. You can use them for gardening. Um, I have a notebook that I take kayaking and actually like record, you know, what I see or just various thoughts. Um, I have one that I use at the clay studio that I record what kind of glazes. Um, and they're great because they're, you know, something you make yourself um, and they're, um, you know, you can have multiple ones going at the same time, so. So once everyone's to the point where your spine has the long, the two lines that go from the top hole, the hole above the middle and the middle, and then the thread coming out the back, you then go back into the inside from the bottom hole. So now you're way down at the bottom, the final hole. Our book shifted, that happens sometimes. Yeah, you can also use uh, clothes pins or paper clips uh, to really kind of keep it in place. Um, we were trying to simplify the kits, so. Okay. So now on the back of your spine, you're gonna have two, two, space, and then two, and your uh, string should actually be at the bottom inside wall, so. And you're actually almost done, so. Two more steps. Two press a couple more. So yeah, two more needle particular steps. So then you're going to go to the hole just directly above the bottom hole. So you're going from the inside to the outside. So this the hole above the bottom. So this would be the five seven spot. On your template. On your template. Not for sure. No. <laughs> we make things up. Okay, mostly me. I make things up. Oh, one, can I? Yes, you can show it. Okay. Okay. So now you'll have the string is coming out of that second to the bottom hole. So you'll have this kind of a, a gap there, but you've now completed the sort of the inner every hole has at least one string on the inside, but you can't see that because it's white string on white. So. 
So now this final step, which is still pretty, it's not incredibly hard, but there's, well, the final threading step. The only small thing that you want to do is if you notice the thread across the middle on the inside, we're about to go through the middle hole again, but you want to sort of shift the string to the side. I'm not sure well you can see that. That when you put the needle back through the hole, you have one string on one side of the thread in the middle and one string on the other. So as you go through again. So if my if my piece of felt here is the middle string and that went from hole two to hole five seven, then I want one of the original strings on one side and one on the other. So we're kind of going to actually tie a knot around that middle string and that's going to anchor everything. So, so now if you sort of look at the close up screen, um, you have two strings on either side of the middle thread. Um, and then for the final step. Can I ask you to stop for just one yep. second? Yeah. Okay. I'm Definitely. On, um, <laughs> I went into the middle from the bottom. This is the bottom. Um, and then I go up to this one here. Then, yep. Then you go up to the bottom. You go up five, to five, seven. Yep. And then oh. you're going to go from the inside to the outside. There. Inside. Okay. So it's reds on the outside. Okay. And then you go back through the middle. To the final set time. Oh, okay. Back to the number one. Yep. Okay. Sorry, I get. No, you guys are awesome. This is really super tricky to do online. So. <laughs> I keep losing my thread off of my needle. <laughs> you could do the book binders, not. We missed what you said, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Well, until you just pass it through the thread. Yeah. 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 Steve, I could imagine some of your uh, ink, your woodblock ink prints as great covers for these. Oh, yeah. 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 I, um, I <laughs> haven't been down there to take a look at them in a, a while, but I know I do have some that are pretty interesting. Um, I made, uh, well, I did wedding invitations for my sister and for my son, Chandler, and I had, you know, the right block prints to do, uh, yeah, dingbats, as, uh, small ones are dingbats, the bigger ones are, you know, the blocks or whatever. Yeah, I've got, I don't know, I, I can't even remember everything. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> so where are we at, Nate? Yeah, so right now your notebook should have two strings on either side of the string that went from the hole directly above the middle and directly below the middle. So this is the part that you will want scissors um, or something to do with a thread. So you're going to cut off your excess thread that's attached to the needle. Put that back in our uh, wool so we can keep track of it. And then you're going to take the two threads and you're going to tie them uh, very simply twice. Like a square knot? A square knot, yeah. Right over left, left over right. Or, the other way, yeah. or yeah. If you forget. Or if you're left handed. <laughs> So then you'll have a little knot in the middle and you just want to cut directly above that knot. So that you aren't cutting the knot off, but you're not leaving a lot of string attached to the knot above. So just there'll just be a little bit of excess. And you have each made a notebook. We're very close to finishing it. Uh, we started talking about covers um, and we've used a lot of different things. Um, 
over the few years that we've been doing this. Um, we've used uh, just greeting cards that we've really liked. Um, somewhere over there, we have a, a calendar um, that we've just recycled some of the, the pictures from the calendar, uh, Nate's. Um, so that makes, so anything that has a slightly rigid um, quality to it. Um, the, the inside paper that you're using actually came from a print shop. Often they'll have free paper um, there on the end, like that they trimmed off to, to fit the size of their projects. Uh, Nate, do you wanna share some of the other notebooks that you've made? Or do we wanna see if we have questions first? We'll see if we have questions and I'll segue into the other types of projects. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. Oh, we have two. Two done. Maybe more. Three, four. Awesome. Yay. Everybody was successful. And yeah. So do you want to talk a little bit about where, where you've gone from this initial design? Uh yeah. So I started out making those and I made those for a little while. And then I got this book that's a really, really nice book. Um, it's a book about making books. Uh, I'm not sure if it translates onto this because for me it's mirrored. So for you it might be mirrored. But um, it's called Making Books: A Guide to Creating Handcrafted Books by the London Center for the Arts. And it's really, really helpful and talks in very large amounts of detail on how to do all these different bindings and to give really, really precise things. Um, and I recommend if you get this book, you should also look into getting, um, they have these online, but they're just book finding kits. Uh, mine came in this little uh, plastic bag. And those typically have it all, which is very helpful um, for very quickly stabbing through all of the paper. It's a bit sharper than a T-pin and the handle makes it a bit easier to control. It comes with thread, which is um, typically waxed in different colors. Uh, scissors, which for cutting thread, very helpful. Um, I don't remember what this is called, but you use that on the spine to keep everything sort of in place. Cotton binding tape. Yeah, binding tape. Um, got rulers, so you can have very precise measurements. Uh, they come typically with brushes for your glue, because when you do more complex covers, like something I'm about to show you, um, Pretty soon, uh, you have to get your glue pretty evenly dispersed across all of it and pretty thin. So the brush comes in pretty comes in handy for that. And then they come with these clips, which you can find lots of places. They aren't completely unique to these kits, but you would attach those to your paper so that it doesn't shift as you are binding it. So it'll stay completely as it is throughout the process. And then it also just comes with some needles, um, both typical binding needles and normal needles. Um, I use both. And my favorite thing that these come with, and it's the thing that I use probably the most, minus the needles and thread, obviously, in these kits is bone folders. So bone folders are small, made of bone, as the name suggests. And they either sort of have this longer, look with sort of a pointed end or the sort of more, I like this one a bit better because it's a bit more ergonomic, but essentially it goes down to a sort of edge and you would run that edge across the paper to get the tightest crease you can get so that all of the folds on your paper are really, really tight. Um, and it works really, really well. Um, and so some examples of some notebooks, um, one that I made a little while ago. Um, I didn't finish it off quite right, but this style is called uh, stab hole binding, where you essentially stab all the way through the paper from one side to another, and you just put the sections. So there's ridges across the back. Those are the folded pieces of paper. And then you just take your cover material and stab all the way through it. And then there's a certain binding technique where you wrap around it and go through a few different times. And that creates a pretty nice notebook. Um, and then uh, later on, this one took me a little while to get to this level, but you can start making notebooks that look more like this. 
So they have multi-sections, cloth covers, then they open up and have quite a few pages in them overall. So this one I made pretty recently. And that one has like five or six of these littler sections in it. So the pamphlets. So well, we are doing more of a pamphlet style with yeah. the individual pieces of paper that you're folding and putting together. The style that I use the most are called sections. That's the uh, technical name where you take a piece of paper, you fold it, then you actually cut up uh, two thirds of the way along the spine. Uh, with a book binder's knife, typically in a class, which is what we can do in the air. <laughs> uh, you cut up two thirds of the way, you turn it 90 degrees, you fold it again, you fold all of it. Okay. Um, and you can either stop there or you can cut it another two thirds of the way up the new spine you just created and fold it again. Typically with larger paper, that's going to create a really small, really thick <laughs> spiny notebook. But yes, along those lines. So that would be a section, and then you take multiple sections and put them together. But that makes it so that your pages are all attached throughout the entire process. And then at the end, you do something called freeing the pages, where you take the bookbinder's knife or an old paper cutter. That's going to be really thick to cut through that, clean away with. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you free all the pages in the end so that each page is then by itself. So that's what I did with this, is I made uh, four or five sections. And then I did a process of binding all of those sections together. Um, this actually involves, I think like, yeah, eight holes. This one has eight holes in it. And you go, I'm not sure if I can explain it in a way that'll make sense over the Zoom, but- um, Can we see the spine of it? Like how does it go through the spine? Or- So this one, you can't see the spine because uh, He's put a cover over it, but we do have another one that's a little more visible, although it's it's not quite as technical. Um, this was one that, that Ellie did for Jeff, and we she had two covers, but then it does have the each little pamphlet, and so she would go in and out and kind of weave them together. And on that style, Nate, you would go basically you do all your tops at once, right? Or no, you do. No, so I think she did it. This was before we really had the knowledge that we do now on how to do these things before I got the book. So I'm not sure how she did this one. Um, I think it just sort of goes from each pamphlet. She got it to stick together pretty well though. Um, but with this one, you essentially have four or five roll rows, depending on how many sections you have with eight holes across and you have a little knot in the bottom, like farthest to one of the edges holes. And then you go all the way across, uh, going from inside to outside. And then with the eight holes, you're going to come out on the outside on the next farthest hole. And then you just go up one. And then you weave up the next row and then up one again. And you just keep going like that all the way along. Um, and then I think I just went through the bottom. I, you loop it around somewhere in there so it, it stays. Yeah, it stays together a little bit more. And um, you can also just, this was also a little bit less technical. Um, this was more of an experiment that I really liked the result of. Um, but there's also a method where it's just, it's this, but you just do two sections at a time and then attach the sections together afterwards. And I forget the exact binding technique for that one, but that's another level of this. Um, and they get pretty complicated or they can also be really simple. So no matter where your sort of range is, you can make the effective one. Yeah, and you can, there's books that you can, can find, but you can also do some Googling. Um, that's how we first got into this was we just Googled book binding and found a good set of directions. Um, and the other thing is you don't have to be bound by the size that we, created that was just the size of paper. Um, you can get really creative with, with the shapes and sizes. But basically when you make your template, we recommend doing that. Find your me me measure to find your middle and put your first hole there. And then typically when I'm doing a template, I'll then decide how close I want the, the edges, the, the stitch to the edge. So this one, I would probably come down like a half inch 
and then I divide the difference for that that middle. The well, I keep saying middle. So the the second and kind of this is it fourth hole. It's so you have the yeah. yeah so you'd have the middle hole first, and then you'd have the the top and the bottom, and then that kind of secondary hole in the between the the middle and the top, or the middle and the bottom. I just split the difference. So that's just a basic five hole. Um, which is what we did today that will lead you through that. So do we have any questions or thoughts of how you might use these? Yeah, I have a question. So so typically what's the space between the holes? That's maybe like what, two inches? Is that like a typical spacing between the holes? I, I understand like the, this one would be less, but what, do you, what about those ones? So the spacing between the holes varies pretty greatly depending on the type of notebook you're making. So for this one, the space between, so can see which one you're yeah, about. so for this one, the spaces between the holes vary. So the spaces between the holes that the actual stitches are on are a little bit greater than the holes that are right next to each other. So it sort of goes short distance, long distance, short distance, long distance. Um, and again, that one has quite a three more holes than this one times like five more. Um, yeah, so it really varies. Um, an inch, it also depends on the size of your notebook because if you have a really short, long notebook, then you're not gonna have, you're not gonna have the same amount of space to put the same number of holes that far apart. Um, but if you have a really, really tall notebook, you want to have enough space between the holes that you can get to the edge so the edges are still pretty much attached and not going to start coming apart at the top and bottom. So yeah, it kind of varies. Speaking on templates, you don't, once you get to the sort of multi-section notebooks, you don't actually, I wouldn't use a template as often. Um, I would sort of, I measure along the spine for the ruler and on just one of the sections, put the holes that I want and then I line up all of the sections on top of each other and just draw the lines all the way down the spines of the sections. You clamp it, right? Yeah. yeah, you would, you know, clamp it with pins or with a book or something just so that they all stay even. And then you just go down the spine in the different spots. And then you can poke the holes afterwards. And with them all, it's slightly easier. You can actually go in from the spine um, if you put like the notebook on a table, you can go in from the spine. So you could go through your section or you can also, if you wanted to do a template, then you can make the template, put it on the inside and go through that as well. So it varies on what you're trying to do with the notebook at the time, um, but yeah, I'd say. But the biggest is how close, making sure you're relatively close to the top and bottom. So those, it doesn't flop open on you. Maximum of three quarters inch, but I'd really recommend half inch. Maximum. That's a great uh, question. And, the top and, bottom. and then you can measure it out from there. The middle should be middle, so. And they're really fun to do with kids, you know, as well, or teens. Um, so um, we've had friends over, I made them with friends um, and it's kind of a fun thing to, to bring back or, you know, if they, you know, uh, let Nate and one of his friends write together. And so they have this world and this language that they've created a little Tolkien-ish. Um, and so the, the books are a great way to facilitate that process, so. And it feels super special to, to make and use, but also to give, so. Any other questions? Where do you get your materials from? Amazon so, or locally? Most of ours have been found. <laughs> yeah, so if you can buy yeah. paper, I think that's great. Um, 
for thread, it's probably easiest to buy waxed thread online. But if you want to buy normal thread and wax it yourself, what you essentially just pull down the thread and run it over the wax so that it gets the nice little bit of wax on the thread. That'll make it stronger and keep it from knotting. If you're doing a much larger notebook that requires a lot more string. So you can either buy wax thread online or buy the thread at like a farmer's market or a farm stand. I mean the wax. And then yeah. the wax. And then you'd buy the thread anywhere you wanted really, like fabric store or anything. Fabric and, store. and this is like a crochet cotton. Yeah. So you want, you know, like a pretty thick and durable thread so that it doesn't snap while you're making sure everything is nice and tight. Um, yeah, for paper, you can buy, if you want like really, really high quality paper, you can go to a sort of like art store or something. But you can also buy like even just sketchbook paper. If you get like the really, really large sketchbooks, those are kind of the perfect size for making signatures. Perfect. So yeah. this size notebook is from like just one of those larger sketchbooks. Oh. And then I did the signature making pro section making process and it turned out a pretty good size notebook. And you change what you want to do and the size of your paper for the end result of the notebook. So, and then a bookbinder's kit you can find online pretty easily by yeah. needles. Um, yeah, so it sort of varies. And the, the kits are about 15 to $20. Um, so they definitely are worth it because um, you can, you know, having the clips and the needles and the scissors and, you know that all um it all together is is really nice um so so we've definitely done a a, a bit of you know some of this is is free materials we've gone to the the studio store and gotten the 11 by 17 that's what nate was just talking about and folded those um to do that sort of folded method um you know we've used various found things that we mentioned like calendars um you can cover your covers with fabric. Um, we had access to a, a piece of leather. Um, so we've done some leather covers. Um, yeah, um, we've done, you know, just a simple, the same paper as inside, but then we've gotten a stamp uh, and just done various stamps on the outside. So they're, um, I've taken paper and run it through the sewing machine um, just to kind of like do crazy stitches and, and done covers that way. Um, it's really the sky's the limit. I think you could use old playing cards. You could use, you know, old cookbooks, old book covers, um, depending on the type. Um, can you hand me the brown one? You know, whether you're trying to create a fold or just two separate pieces, this is, you know, a separate front and a separate back. Um, that what you use for your cover material might dictate whether you try to get a fold in there or just try to have it flat. So um, there's a lot of flexibility and that's one of the beauties of this is, you know, it's, it's really your mood of the day, the resources that are there. Um, we've used photocopying paper too. You know, it's, it's, you know, it doesn't have to be a high, high cost item. So yeah, great question. And of course, the you know the the big book you know to really use for punching your holes. Um, there's lots of free book files around. Um, you know, for the most part, we don't really punch into the book, but it definitely having that crease. You don't want to use a, a high highly prized volume for that. So. Good. Thank you for joining us. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. This was really interesting. I always wanted to learn how to do this and have just made up my own ways, but it's nice to uh, actually know how you're really supposed to do it. <laughs> Sounds good. I will uh, see if I can find the website where we originally got our directions. Um, I think I have all of your your emails from the where the Zoom link was sent out. We'll, we'll send that out as well. So that way you, you have the, the printed directions. Um, to refer back to. So, yeah, thanks for joining us. So, and maybe the uh, the titles of the books too would be helpful. And yes. maybe the library can buy them. <laughs> that would be great. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Nate. Yeah. Thanks, Nate. Well, thank you so much, uh, Nate and 
and Jessica. And with that, we'll end the meeting. And um, I think I sent out an email with everybody's emails on it. So I think Jessica, you have everybody's emails um, to send out your information. And with that, we will end the meeting. Mm -hmm.